What's up, everybody? Welcome to Friday Night Wars. And I'm talking, so you already know what happened. I laid the smack it down on Mike last week, and you guys came out, you guys voted, and you guys let us know. Wasn't a lot of votes, but it was enough. Enough to let me take Mike down. Mike, I'm going to still take it easy. Nothing would bring pleasure to me than to roast you this week. I would love to talk about your chargers. I would love to talk about your face or anything else, but I'm not. In my victory this week, Mike, I want to honor my grandfather, if that's all right, because I know I don't want to bring a little sadness to the show, but that's what I'm going to do. My grandfather passed away last Sunday. Clifford Dell Glenn was a United States Marine, you know, through and through, through and through. Let me tell you, First Sergeant, United States Marines. His medals include National Defense with one, Purple Heart, Silver Star, Vietnam cam uh, Campaign, Combat Action, Presidential uni uh, Unit Commendation, Vietnam Service with three, Good Conduct with one, Navy Unit Commendation, Recruiter Ribbon, Sea Service Deployment, Desert Storm, Desert uh, Shield, and Southeast Asia. My grandpa was contacted many times, many times by all these military shows, such as Mel Bag and others. And he turned them down saying he didn't fight for his country for be on TV. My grandpa was suffering in, in, from multiple injuries in the Vietnam War and refused to surrender his position and, and, and helped repel the enemy onslaught of that site. So what a tough son of a bitch. Oh, SOB, my bad. He will be missed. Grandpa, from the United States, they thank you from your service. Everybody in the United States thanks you for your service. And I thank you for always being there. Rest easy. Let's get ready to rumble. With Mike on the mic and Joe Morley About to bring you more heat Welcome to the war zone You can have a floor seat Watch him on your iPhone Watch him on your Galaxy It's a sports debate show Straight up out of SoCal Gather around the laptop Friday nights it goes down Then we on the radio Coming to your locale Got into the third round Better bring the smoke now Step into the war zone 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 Step into the war zone, Step into the war zone. Friday night war zone Friday night war zone Step into the war zone Step into the war zone Step into the war zone. 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 Friday night war zone. Friday night war zone. Man, that was the best victory speech we've had on Friday night war so far. I mean, it's one thing to go and serve, you know, like because I went and served also, but it's one thing to go and serve and it's one thing to do all that, man, because that takes bravery at a level that <clears throat> humans aren't even designed to have. That takes courage at a level that. Humans naturally are taught in those scenarios to run for their life and to that. I mean, that's literally and in a literal form, sacrificing your life for the country. And that's something that naturally instinctually humans don't do. So when people do something like that, that's a whole nother level of honor. That's a whole nother level of courage. I actually have chills talking about it right now because it's a big deal. And, and thank you to, to your grandpa, Joe. And, and I hope he's resting easy up there and, 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 enjoying his time after life yes sir and and mike you being the military guy yourself and you know our show loves military people mm -hmm. and we will always respect them and what they do and like you said to live your whole life and to do your whole life and like you said everybody else when they see something bad they run the other way mm -hmm. and there's people out there and it's crazy people like my grandpa that are out there that run to the action, mm -hmm. knowing that this could be the last time that you are on earth, but you're going to save somebody else. It's unbelievable how great people are. Not, you know, my grandpa and everybody else who is doing this. And we respect the hell out of the, our, our military here on this show. You, of course, you already know that. 
Yeah, yeah, man, it's, it's a good one. Anyways, let's get into the show. Let's get let's go to war. Are you excited <clears> for it today? We got some good topics. I'm ready for win number two. Woo woo. Let's do back this. Back to back. Have any of us? We've never. Neither one of us has gone back to back yet. Well, we're gonna keep that trend going. I'm going. Today's the one, day. No, 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 no. We're gonna keep the trend going back and forth, and then I'll go to the back to back in in two weeks. Look, I'm I'm not just gonna win one, not two. Not three, not four. I'm taking them. Wait, they're wait, coming. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you weren't a basketball fan. You can't use that reference. It's out your repertoire. You can't. I was trying it. to think of something that that goes back to back, but I don't. I don't remember anybody saying back to back. Do you want me to go? Uh, uh, Mike's gonna go back to back to back to back like the Buffalo Bills did in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Dude, you need to get on your Drake referencing. Come on, he has a whole song called Back to Back. Back to back like he's Jordan 96, 97. Back to back like he's on the cover of Lethal Weapon. Who's Drake? Come on. Who's Who's Drake? Okay, okay. okay. Let's get into the mix. Let's go to war. Yo, Dan Fouts is in the Hall of Fame. Dan Fouts and Philip Rivers' careers are pretty identical to me. Eli Manning is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Philip Rivers' career literally ran parallel with Eli's from day one. And 100%, there is no way anyone can tell me that Eli Manning has been a better quarterback on the field and had a better career other than those two Super Bowls than Philip Rivers. The only thing that Eli Manning has on Philip Rivers he was in a better situation at the right time. Big Ben Roethlisberger will be in the Hall of Fame. And similar to Eli, Rivers' career kind of ran parallel with him. And I'll back off. I think personally that Phil Rivers, over the period of time and the length of time, has been better than Big Ben Roethlisberger. And Ben Roethlisberger has been blessed with some of the best offenses that has ever been comprised for the Steelers at this in his era, in his time. But I'll give you guys that Rivers is equal play-wise with Big Ben Roethlisberger, but Philip Rivers, again, just in a worse situation. So for those of you who are ready to hold Philip Rivers out of the Hall of Fame because of solely Super Bowls, I have a question for you. You are willing to hold out a better player who had a better playing career and promote two guys in because James Harrison made a crazy pick six right before halftime versus the Cardinals because Eli Manning had two miracle catches to give him his two Super Bowls, by the way, Tom Brady would have eight Super Bowls. It wasn't for those miracle catches. Ridiculous. Because those very small percentage of moments in their careers, the very small percentage of moments that got them those two Super Bowls over a whole 17 year career, that makes them a Hall of Fame quarterback and not Philip Rivers. If that's the case, are we ready to put Nick Foles in the Hall of Fame? Because he won a Super Bowl. You're, you're nodding yes. You're nodding yes. Philip Rivers was leaps and bounds better than Foles, but Foles won a Super Bowl, right? Look, there are five quarterbacks in the Hall of Fame right now who have never won a Super Bowl. Dan Fouts, Jim Kelly, Dan Marino, Warren Moon, and Frank Tarkenton. And I am telling you right now, stamp it. Maybe not first ballot, maybe second ballot, maybe third ballot. I am 100% certain that the Hall of Famers will vote Phillip Rivers as the sixth quarterback into the NFL Hall of Fame to have not won a Super Bowl. Mike, Mike, Mike. Eli Manning will make the, he will make the Hall of Fame just because he held Tom Brady out of two more Super Bowls. And people are just going to celebrate that. Not just because he won it, but because Tom Brady didn't. Anyways, I think Phillip Rivers had a great career. I'm not going to lie. He didn't cry at the start of his career like Eli, right? He basically took that trade from San Diego and played, right? He, he did it. We all know that. He got to learn. He was lucky enough to learn from Drew Brees when he got there, right? I just don't think he has enough to be in the Hall of Fame. I understand. I'm a Raider fan. I got to watch him. I love some of his late game heroics when he threw a pick right to us. Anyways, Bill Rivers has no rings. No Super Bowl appearances, no MVPs. He was a top player, but he was not an elite 
player. He was a good quarterback, not an elite quarterback. And, I, and then I'll break it down for you. The Chargers had eight winning seasons with them. Then he had another winning season with the Colts, right? They had another winning season. So we're looking at nine winning seasons in, what, 17 years? So half of his career, he had a winning season. In five of those seasons, in five, a winning season is just nine wins or more. So in five of those seasons, he only won 10 games or more. Five. He had 60,000 plus passing yards, which is good, until you realize that's the new normal now. That's going to be the new normal in the passing league. And the NFL is a passing league. And Rivers was a great competitor. And everybody loved the fire that he brought to the games and watching him play. But when you actually sit down and look, his stats were nothing special. Nothing special. Great player. Great competitor. I love, would love him as a teammate. But he was never the elite. You can never say that Phillip Rivers was a top three quarterback in this league at all. You could say he was top 10. But you can never, he was good enough for the Chargers to never move on for him, but just not great enough to carry a team by himself and win a championship. Yeah, and I'm not saying that we hold Eli and Big Ben Roethlisberger out of the Hall of Fame. I think they both are Hall of Fame quarterbacks. But for the same reasons that I would say that they're Hall of Fame quarterbacks, not because of the two Super Bowls. You can make the same exact argument for Phil Rivers. Was Eli, was Eli a perennial top five quarterback? Was he even a perennial top? T- Honestly, I was thinking about it the other day, right? And we were, we were talking about it on the app that we're on where we go and debate a lot. And I don't think Eli Manning had a breakout season. Did he? Like, even when they won the Super Bowl, those were miracle runs by wildcard Giants teams that were backed on their defenses. And, and they just made the plays in the moments that it happened. The ball bounced the right way for them. Big Ben did have some hot years. So I'll give that to him. Big Ben, you know, throws for 4,000, 5,000 yards every single season and 35 touchdowns. Usually. I mean, we're talking over his whole career and Phillip rivers kept pace with big Ben doing the exact same thing. The only thing he doesn't have is the rings. And to me, to win a super bowl, the stars have to align. And, and that's why a lot of people try and bring Tom Brady down a couple notches. I think you're wrong for doing that. If you do do that, by the way, is because you got to understand when we talk about winning, everything needs to be perfect. And the Chargers organization is one of the worst in sports ever. And I'll straight up admit it. And I'm a Chargers fan. That's why I get so upset is because I see the potential because we've always had really good receivers. We've always had pretty good running backs, even with Ryan Matthews and Darren Sproles and that core and Mike Dolbert. That's a good running back room. The offensive line has always stunk other than when we had LT and he broke the record. That's crazy, right? The one year we have a good old line, we go 14 and two and break all these records offensively with Philip Rivers and Ladane Thompson, Antonio Gates. We've never had a great defense. The defense has been okay at times, but for the most part, just an awful defense. And you're just, you're not going to win Super Bowls no matter who it is. It could be Joe Montana, Tom Brady, Jesus himself. You're not going to win a Super Bowl with a terrible O-line and a below average defense year in and year out. And not to mention the years where Phil Rivers probably should have won a Super Bowl when we have Keenan Allen, when we have Antonio Gates who can still do a lot, when you have uh, Malcolm Floyd still balling. Those years that we had chances to probably win a Super Bowl were wasted on Mike McCoy, were wasted on Anthony Lynn. It's not Phil Rivers' fault he doesn't have a Super Bowl. Because if he was on the Saints in Drew Brees' position, Philip Rivers would have had a similar career to Drew Brees. I'll give you that Philip Rivers and Eli Manning were basically the same. But championship talk, right? No, Championships not talk. Not even the once same. one guy walks in the ring and you in the room and you see bling on his fingers, you're gonna be like, damn. That guy right there. I'll give you that. Their numbers are basically the same. Eli Manning never had a breakout season, like you said, but championships talk, right? But Phillip Rivers compared to ben, Big Ben, I, I'm not going to give you that one because Big Ben could put the – he was like Greg Jennings on Madden, right? He puts the team on his back. There was games out there that Big Ben won completely on his own, and I, I, I never really saw that with Phillip Rivers. Philip Rivers always had a good cast around him, and when he didn't, they lost. Big Ben, he's a winner. They win games with him, and he's playing hurt all the time. There's a difference. But I can see the Eli Manning argument, but 
like you said, there's you can't go against two championships. You can't you can't knock a guy because he won two Super Bowls, and that, and that's really what it comes down to. And it sucks, but that's the reality: is people hold championships over great players, and it, I don't know why. And it's a bad it's a bad thing to do because there are some great players that never win championships, but it's always going to be something that players are held to. And then you know if a player jumps ship and they go to a better team because because they want to win that championship before they retire. Now they're called, you know, a ring chaser. <laughs> so you, you can't win. You're never going to win as a player. I think Phillip Rivers was good. Uh, he tried to go to Indy. He tried to get that ring this year. It didn't work out. And he finally realized it's time to pull out. Like he hasn't, you know, it's his time. First time in his life, he's pulling out. Uh, and Phillip Rivers is done. A uh, great, great playing career. And when people go back and they talk about some of these top quarterbacks, he will be mentioned. But he will not be mentioned as Hall of Fame quarterback Philip Rivers. Oh well, you and I both know. Like, even if people disagree with him getting in, the Hall of Fame voters are eventually going to put him in. And like I said, it probably won't be first ballot. It depends on who's going up against him. Like, if he had to go up this year, there's no way. There's a lot of good quarterbacks on the ballot this year to go, and he just wouldn't have a chance. But who knows what the what the ballot's going to look like in five years? You got to look at who's retiring right now, right? Philip Rivers. So Rivers is, is going to be the only quarterback probably in five years that is like, okay, he's up. Let's see if we can get him in. So I, I don't think he'll be first ballot, but I, I definitely think they're going to vote him in eventually. Cause on years where the, the class is going to be weak and I and a hall of fame class being weak. I'm, I'm, I'm talking crazy, but on, on a year where the competition isn't going to be wild, you're not going to have, you know, a bunch of guys that should be first ballot on the same, same voting. Phil Rivers is going to sneak in as, as, as one of the, the final candidates to be selected in the Hall of Fame. It's going to happen. I'm not – I'm debating whether it should happen because a lot of people are saying that it shouldn't. Well, let's go five years from now. Yeah, it's going to see. Happen. Drew Brees is going to retire this year. More than likely he's gone. Yeah. So you're going to have Drew Brees. Philip Rivers already retired. Larry Fitzgerald <laughs> retired. So these are – this is the class five years from now that we're going to be looking at. Would – and I don't know how many they could take in. I think it's like you have to get a certain amount. It's like five, right? Five or six. Um, they keep changing it. I don't who, understand some of it. Who would be three over Philip Rivers that's retiring now? Well, that's what I'm saying. We'd have to look. But who's being carried over after all these years, too? There's still going to be carryovers. You know, there's still carryovers. There's still other stuff that we're looking at that you don't know because we have to see when we get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what if Eli Manning doesn't make it his first year and now – you know, it's the second year, and it's Eli Manning versus Philip Rivers, and now people are looking in that championship even more. You know what I mean? It's, there's a lot that's going to play out. Um, like you said, I – look, I said this on an app before. I said, once Terrell Davis made the Hall of Fame, nothing will surprise me from now on. Because like Eli Manning, Terrell Davis does have Super Bowl rings. But his career numbers and his length of career doesn't qualify you for the, for the Hall of Fame. His Super Bowl rings, yes, but then again, he was a system running back in a running in a system that basically you said we plug any running back in here, he runs for a thousand yards, yeah. and then you go, oh, these three years, and the, you know that Super Bowl run, Hall of Famer, yeah. Hall of Famer. So once Terrell Davis, and I, uh, you know, not bad, I'm not hating on Terrell Davis, but I kind of am. No, he's not a Hall of Famer. There's no way he's a Hall of Famer, but he's a Hall of Famer. So once he made it, anything's possible, guys. Anything is possible. Yeah, you're. Yeah, and, I, and I'll help you out here. He's to the Broncos fans. He's not saying Terrell Davis was a bad running back. He's just saying that Terrell Davis isn't, you know, Ladane Thompson, Eric Dickerson, Barry Sanders. He isn't in that class. Um, and I agree with you when you when you say that. Peyton Manning made No. Sean Moreno look like a really really good running back to a point where we thought he was going to be like a top five running back at one point. That can happen. <laughs> that can happen. Um, but in a quarterback situation like this, Philip Rivers had a 17-year career, but really it was 15 years. He sat for his first year and a half, um, and he's going to be top seven in every statistical category. And I know you talk about era, but to me, I think you're hammering home the fact that he should be a Hall of Famer even more because this era, the quarterback means so much more than any other era in, in football history. The quarterback is everything. If you don't have a good quarterback and you have the best team ever around him, you're probably still not going to win the Super Bowl in this era. Look at the final four quarterbacks this year. They are the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. Josh Allen is is getting there. But other than Josh Allen, they are the top three quarterbacks in the NFL probably. You need to have that quarterback and quarterback position. And I think everyone 
is going to get in. Even guys that didn't win a ring, I think if Matty Ice keeps playing for a couple more years and can pad his stats a little bit more, he can get in. And Matthew Stafford pads his stats, maybe goes somewhere else and has some playoff runs because at least against him you have, well, he's never been in the playoffs. You know what I mean? But again, not his fault. The Lions stink. They had Calvin Johnson and they just let him go. That was your chance right there to build a team around Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson. But anywhere from Matthew Stafford and Matthew and uh, Matt Ryan to Tom Brady, this era, they're all getting in the Hall of Fame. You're about to see a lot of quarterbacks going to the Hall of Fame in the 2020s and early 2030s. So some will say that the Hall of Fame voting is soft. <laughs> right? That's yep. what you would say, like, we we like these guys, so we don't want to be the ones that tell them they're not Hall of Famers. So we're just going to let everybody in. We're going to give everybody a participation trophy is what you're saying. No, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that. That's how I'm taking it. When you, okay, when you look, say in 20 years, you look at the all-time numbers, right? Patrick Mahomes is going to get in here. Some of these guys are going to get in here over a 15-year career. But all these guys that are in there right now that are breaking all those records, they're going to stay there for another 15 years because there's about to be a turnover of quarterbacks that aren't going to be able to catch them for 15, 20 years. Even though they're amazing, they're not going to be able to catch them for 15, 20 years. Before that 15 to 20 years, you're going to have the top 10 quarterbacks on the list of all the statistics not be in the Hall of Fame for 15 to 20 years? Uh, You don't think that's going to raise some questions here? It's going to raise questions, but nobody cares. They do. They do. I got you on this one, Joe. <laughs> Let's move on to the next topic. Nobody cares. You already know. You already know who won this one. Mike <laughs> on the mic next round. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Mike, the worst coach in hire so far, I, you know, and I know it's still early. It's real early. I think it's, it's too early to say that any hire right now is a bad one. We could sit here and we could scratch our heads at a couple of them and go, I wonder what they were thinking when they did that, right? But I think the one that I do question, I question the most right now, is the Detroit Lions and Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, I'm not saying that it will fail. I'm not saying he shouldn't be a head coach. I actually liked him a couple of years ago when he took over as the interim coach for the Miami Dolphins. I just thought the Lions were going to go in a different direction. I thought, you know, the Lions hired Matt Patricia last time and it didn't work out. So they thought maybe they would want more experience there. Maybe someone who had been a head coach before. I've read that Campbell is now bringing in Aaron Glenn to bring his defensive coordinator, which is a good thing because Glenn, like Campbell, got a lot of uh, head coaching interviews this year as well. So it's good to bring two guys in that want to be the head coach, right? I like to hire. I'm not knocking anything of Campbell. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. Not I'm saying I think Campbell is a good players coach and a motivator. If he can get the players to buy in in Detroit, and I hopefully he could turn the Lions around. I'm just saying I thought it was going to be a bigger name in Detroit. I thought they were going to go out there and make a big splash. It wasn't. It's not, and it probably won't be a bad hire. It's just one of those, hmm, oh, that guy? Oh, okay, mm, hires. You know what I'm saying? It's, I expected a bigger name in Detroit to turn that franchise around, but more power to Dan, Dan Campbell. Prove the world wrong, right? Honestly, I agree with you. I don't think anyone has completely fallen on their face yet. You know, all the hires have been decent at a minimum to me, and really it's because the head coaching pool this year has some amazing candidates for the most part. You know, at first glance, I didn't enjoy my Chargers pick, but I've done a little bit more research, kind of looked into to, uh, who we hired, and, and we might have found something there. We'll see. I'm hopeful now rather than just pissed off like I was when the news broke. But I do foresee a team screwing the pooch eventually, and that is because there's only one name that they should be going after. Still, after four months, this team has not found a head coach, and with their track record, I am bracing for shock. And that is the Houston Texans. If they hire anyone that is not named Eric Bieniemy, Houston and Deshaun Watson is going to riot. And it's going to be ugly when Deshaun Watson is really demanding a trade. Because right now it's just like rumblings. It's like little rumblings. Shefty comes on and says, Deshaun Watson's unhappy. But then Shefty also comes on and says, but just want to clarify, Deshaun Watson has not requested a trade yet. Not hiring Eric Bieniemy or hiring 
someone out of left field instead of Eric enemy, which is I, I think the Houston Texans are going to do, just assuming, is going to send this city and this fan base and this quarterback into a riot. The enemy can bring the KC deadly offense over to Houston and equip Deshaun Watson with even more magic. And we see what he can do with a bad scheme uh, built by Bill O'Brien. The enemy had also been below Andy Reid for a couple years. I think he has learned a lot from Andy Reid and probably picked up on some awesome and amazing head coaching tactics. Andy Reid's one of the best to ever do it. It just makes so much sense. The enemy to Houston to a point he hopefully is already hired by Houston and they're just waiting for Casey's season to end to make the announcement. The key word in that sentence is hopefully I say hopefully because the Texans, especially as of late, just seem to do the opposite of what makes sense for their franchise and for their fan base. So don't be surprised when the Texans announce that they just hired uh, a college defensive backs coach to be their head coach of the Houston Texans next year. Well, I'm along with you. I think they're going to hire uh, Ben and me now after all this time. I think even if that's not the coach they want, that's who they're going to hire. They because hire. I think they're <laughs> sitting back and they're going, do we trade Watson and get what we can and hire the guy that we want? Or do we hire the coach that Watson wants and we keep both of them? And if it fails, we blame it on Watson and we ship them both out, right? Mm-hmm. And that's probably what's going to happen. They're probably going to blame it on him. Hey, we gave you the guy that we, you wanted. We gave you the coach that you wanted, and it failed. I'm not saying it will, but if it does, who's taking? You know, who, you know they're going to put the blame on somebody, right? You know it's going to come back on Watson. So hey, make your quarterback happy because you're gonna you're gonna have to. You don't want you're the Houston Texans. You don't want to ship out. You don't want to ship Watson out. That's that's yeah. the guy you want to build your team around. So make him happy. Bring the coach in that he wants. If that's the coach he wants, bring it in. If it's a dumpster fire, then we're getting rid of both of you guys. But the enemy should have been hired somewhere sometime this year. And it's crazy that all these jobs are being filled and he still hasn't got a job. I know that he at first he was saying no to the Houston and now he's changed his mind. Now Houston was saying no to him. It was going back and forth. Now they're both talking. And it's just crazy. Uh, and then we still have the Eagle job that is up in the air and crazy. <laughs> And the two names, the two top names are Brian Dable and Eric ben- Benemy, yeah. right? This whole offseason. And now all these other coaches have – all these coaches' spots have been filled, and those guys still are not having a head coaching job. And Dable already said he's not going to the Eagles. Dable and now – Yeah, he's staying with Buffalo more than likely now. So now we got we got to hope that Benemy ben- ben- gets it, or else we're looking at like, dang, I think that's the only thing about this offseason and these coaching moves. It's just like we thought there was two top guys. They didn't get their jobs. They didn't get the jobs at, right as of right now. With the Chargers, with your Chargers, I'm not knocking the Staley move. I, I That's his name, right? Staley, I, I'm not knocking him. Mm-hmm. I just think it was too early for him. Uh, he was oh, a yeah. one-year defensive coordinator. Uh, he, could be a, he could turn around and be one of the he- best head coaches we've ever seen. It's just way too early in his career, I think. I think he should have benefited from another year with Sean McVay learning and then did it. But if the Chargers like him, they like him, and that's the guy you go with. Yeah, and I, I'm thinking in the Chargers situation, I bet you Dayball probably broke the news to them before they said it to before he said it to the media that he does plan to stay with Buffalo. So the Chargers said, okay, we're going to hire our second candidate, and that was Staley. My only issue with the hires, and I, like I said, I've calmed down, and the Chargers fans have talked to me. They said, hey, look, man, you know, we needed to go opposite Anthony Lynn, and we needed to go to the defensive guy. We needed to go with a guy that's young. Like all these, he meets all the criteria except for the fact that I wanted the Chargers to pick up someone that's going to be win now mode. And maybe Staley will. Maybe Staley will come in and be win now mode. But I just feel like hiring such a young coach, and I wanted a young coach, but I wanted a young coach with experience. Hiring a guy that's only been in the NFL for four years, he's been on four different teams in four different positions. Um, highest position held was defensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Rams. Amazing job with the Los Angeles Rams. And a lot of people have been saying Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, you know, I mean, of course he's going to be good on defense, but he made some of these other guys that you probably never even heard of before this season come out and ball out. I believe the Rams, you know, second pass rusher, third pass rushers each had over six or seven sacks. And I believe that the secondary, um, each of their, you know, second and third DBs, they all had two, three, four picks in the year. So it's not like Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald carried the defense. The entire defense was amazing last year even the guys that you probably didn't see it coming from 
Um, so I need to go back and still watch Hard Knocks again because I did not watch Hard Knocks with the mentality that one of the guys on the Rams coaching staff is going to be our head coach. And I want to watch it again and see if I can learn some more about him. Um, but I'm hopeful now. I'm hopeful with, with the research that I've done, how quickly he's come up. Um, the only thing that could mean to me is that he's a very good coach. So we'll just see if he's ready for the job and if he can get it done. Um, and as far as Eric Bieniemy and, and Brian Dabble, Dable, Dable obviously already said he's going to stay with Buffalo. Bieniemy not getting a job, I think, is a crime. And I didn't want Bieniemy to go to the Chargers just because I didn't think he would click with our players. I just didn't think he would. I, I really see his demeanor and everything like that. I just didn't see it clicking with our players. I, I, I look at our roster uh, as, you know, clicking with a guy like Robert Sala would have been. And, you know, I, I mentioned Jim Harbaugh a couple times. A guy's real fiery. You know what I mean? Real, real you know, up-tempo. I think Bieniemy is more of like a calm guy. Like, don't worry. We have the best offense in football. We're going to figure it out. And, and that's going to be great in Houston. And that would be great in Houston to me um, with those players. So I hope they hire him. I hope they hire Bieniemy. I think that'd be a good fit for Deshaun Watson. And there's a reason Deshaun Watson wants him because Deshaun Watson knows they'll work well together. Yeah, and I didn't even mention the Falcons head coach. Yeah, uh, that would have been that would have been another one too that I'm like scratching my head about uh, to go, you know, got route. But it is what it is. Uh, it's way too early to assume. We got to see what these coaches can do. And hey, they were all in the NFL for a reason. They're all NFL coaches for a reason, and we'll see what they can do. And hey, we wish them all luck. But uh, this is just it's an early topic, but it's just one of those. That we could say, hey, because everybody's thinking it. Everybody scratches their head when a coach gets hired. And you're like, is that the guy, right guy? And like you said, you had issues with the Chargers head coach. Now that you more and more research it, you're like, oh, I could buy into this one. I can buy into it. Mm-hmm. But at first, you're like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. So it's just like research your coach, make sure it is. Like, I like Dan Campbell, and I think he's a player guy. And I'm just, I never said he's not going to be a good coach. I'm just saying it was a head scratcher when I first saw it on the news. It's just one of those names. Like, yeah. And and I, think, it is, so. I, I think that having the enemy and Dable, who I think are both going to be very good head coaches one day, whether it's this year or in the future, um, having those guys in this coaching pool makes any other hire look bad. Like everyone's like, no, you know, you saw Urban Meyer go and you saw those two big names, you know, they're still not gone yet. So every hire is like, well, why didn't you get this guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's available still. Exactly. Exactly. Everybody, everybody, Everybody has their top guy. And they do the same thing in the, in the NFL draft. Like you, Oh, you drafted this guy, but I wanted this guy. It's the same thing. Nobody, you can, you can't please everybody. Uh, it is what it is, but let's move on to the next topic. Joe, it's gotta be the game where you got this guy, the goat, Versus the guy that a lot of people try and twist the stats and twist the facts to be the GOAT. And Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks of all time, but he's not quite Tom Brady. Those two going to -to head-to-head is probably the most entertaining game that we're going to see all season. Those two going head-to-head might be the most entertaining game that we see in the last five seasons. Those two going head-to-head has been something that we have waited for for decades decades waiting on Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady what we originally thought was gonna be in a Super Bowl but now we get to see it unexpectedly in an NFC title game and Tom Brady at 43 years old has an amazing season at 43 years old and gets his team to the NFC title game at 43 years old You got to love it. You got to love the storyline and the potential of Tom Brady taking down the Green Bay Packers and going on to the Super Bowl and winning his seventh Super Bowl. It's got to be the most entertaining storyline in sports right now to look out for. And honestly, I see it happening. This is going to be a heavyweight bout between the Buccaneers and just their overall loaded offense and defense paired against the Green Bay Packers, and the best offense in football. I will say, I started to have my doubts a little bit on my Tampa Bay Buccaneers pick when I saw Green Bay annihilate the Rams. But then the Tampa Bay defense steps up and reassures me that I need to believe in this team when they just took it to the New Orleans Saints. And I got toasted. I got burned down. I almost got canceled by the internet for saying that the Buccaneers are going to beat the Saints last weekend. So here we go again. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to beat the Green Bay Packers in front of the whole world 
this weekend and advance to the Super Bowl to either play the Chiefs or the Bills. I think both will be very good games, very fun games to watch in the Super Bowl. But I'm telling you that this Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers mm. matchup and the storyline behind it and how we have been waiting for them to come on a collision course for years and years and years is the most entertaining game this weekend, 100%. Mike, I don't know if you know that I got kind of bored right there. I got kind of <laughs> bored of the Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. The better game this weekend, you already know, has to be the Chiefs versus the Buffalo Bills. We already know Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Isn't that – it gets in your head already, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, ah, whatever. We already know. We want to see the battle of the two young quarterbacks. Mahomes has already made a name for himself. The Chiefs are the defending Super Bowl champions. Josh mm -hmm. Allen is a rising star, and the Buffalo Bills are hot. Woo, cool them off. Hot right now. The famous words of Ric Flair. To be the man, you have to beat the man. Woo! Right? So the Bills' road to the Super Bowl goes through the defense. Defending champs. What a story that would be if the defending champs get knocked out, right? They get knocked out. I like what Josh Allen's doing. I like what Sean McDermott's doing. He's showing that he is a top coach in this league. The Chiefs haven't been the same old Chiefs lately. A lot of people are riding the bills off, saying they have zero, a zero chance of winning this game. I think these two teams match up very well against each other. Both of them have top offenses. Both of them have middle-of-the-line defenses, right? The Chiefs beat the Bills earlier this season by running the ball all over them. Can they do it again? Can they do it again? I'm rooting for the underdog. And I'm sure most of the football world is doing the same thing, Mike. Everyone wants to see what Bills Mafia will do if the Bills win and head to the Super Bowl. Mike. Mike, get the table, Mike. Get the table. It's going to be one of those situations where you get the table and this guy slams the other team right through the table. You know, have you ever seen, you know, they get the table and it's like they set it up and everything. And then the guy's like groggy and then they walk up and they're about to slam through the table. Reversal. Boom. The guy who set up the table goes through the table. That's what's going to happen to the Bills. But I won't be the guy that says they have zero chance because the bills are a very good team and if they play a really clean game like they did uh, against indianapolis like they did against baltimore this game's going to be close and it's going to be come down to who's going to make that final play to win it and you know i'm gonna make i'm gonna make the bets in the experienced championship team it already has done it Diggs is going to be right here he's going to be holding Mahomes, and then josh allen's got to come and they got to take him to the table <laughs> take Mahomes to the table <laughs> They're going to sell out on all these tables across the country because Bill's Mafia is going to go crazy <laughs> for the next two weeks. We're going to see tables being broke everywhere. And just imagine, just, just I'm, I'm already imagining how many, the you think the hospitals are filled now. Wait till the Bills make the Super Bowl and all these people thinking tables are easy to break are in the hospital. No, I'm all about tables. I love seeing people go through tables. All right, what do you think is going to happen in the NFC? Who do you got? I'm taking Tampa. I'll take Green Bay. I, I don't want to see – I do not want to see Tom Brady back in there. I would rather see Aaron Rodgers uh, in there fighting for another ring than Brady again, again, again. You know what? To be honest, I'd probably rather see Aaron Rodgers versus Josh Allen as well. But I've just been so high on the Chiefs all year. I can't get to this moment where I've called them continuing on, continuing on, continuing on. Everyone's against them. No, they're continuing on. And then cut the cut the cut the train short and say, okay, now I'm out. I want Green Bay and Buffalo. No, I'm gonna stick to my guns. I've been saying Tampa since the beginning of the season versus Kansas City. That's what I've been going with, and hopefully it happens. Well, both of these both of these matchups happened before. The Chiefs and the Bills played each other, and the yeah. the Bucks and the Packers. Both of them in Week Six of the season. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy, right? Um, like I said, in that game against the Chiefs, the Chiefs beat the Bills 26-17. Mm. It was like. Uh, Edward Tillera went off for like 160 yards. The best game of the season. It was right after the Chiefs got beat by who? The Raiders. Right? So they had to go out there and they had to prove something. They ran the ball all over them. It was right after the Bills got destroyed by Derrick Henry. Um, 
but I think they've gone both different ways, right? Since then, the Bills have the number two offense, the number 14 defense. I told you that. I told you they were right similar. That's how similar they are. The Chiefs have the number one offense, the number 16 defense. So they're <laughs> they match up, they match up perfectly, right? So hopefully, hopefully, this is one of those high scoring, crazy score, 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 score games. Last one to score wins, right? The Buccaneers and the Packers, on the other hand, it was 38 to 10 beat down. The Buccaneers beat the Packers down. And it is what it is. I mean, at that point, everybody was talking about the Packers being, oh, they messed up. We, we saw it, and then they went on their run. But this is how good this matchup is. And, I, and it's crazy because now I'm going to take your side a little bit. But the <laughs> Packers is number five offense, number nine defense. The Bucks number seven offense, number seven defense. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, but I like – but the Bucks have the number one rushing defense. So are they going to stop Aaron Jones? What are they going to do? But I like uh, – in, in your matchup in the, in the, in the Packer game – I think uh, Alexander, who was very underrated cornerback, can make a big difference in that he game. Makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, you took Jalen Ramsey to make a difference, and how'd that work out? But- <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good game. Both games are gonna be good games. As far as the Packers and the Buccaneers, uh, it just comes down to can Aaron Rodgers dominate and continue to dominate with Devontae Adams, no matter who is lined up. From across from them and that's why i had my doubts that's why i said it to you i've said it to you on other shows i think i said it to you on the side like when green bay started to beat the crap out of that rams defense like that and make it look so easy you got aaron Rodgers smiling out there while throwing passes oh boy that means that they can do that to anyone you know what i mean they can do that to anyone they want whenever they show up but i think that just the way green bay seems to have set themselves up in the storyline of them you know not adding anything you know, not drafting the right draft picks that everyone, you know, it was very clear what they needed to do in the draft last year. They are setting themselves up to have a similar result to previous years. And in previous years, Green Bay has been the favorite to win the NFC championship and have been in the NFC championship to win the championship. So don't come at me with this, but it's the Green Bay Packers because the Green Bay Packers have fallen short time and time again. And until they start to change and get that one more player, get that one more move that's going to put you over the edge, and into the Super Bowl, I'm going to keep betting against them. And I'm going to keep betting for the guy that seems to be in the Super Bowl every single season without missing a beat. He's back here Mike. on my wall. I'm Mike. kind of, this is, this is, I'm, I'm foreshadowing. We got the Patrick Mahomes wig and the Tom Brady jersey. It's happening. Actually, I should probably put this on, put them on Mike. together. What do you think? Mike, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Look into the crystal ball. Josh Allen. Aaron Rodgers. That's what you see. Oh, I didn't know the fortune teller was going to show up to the Friday Night Wars debate. He's always, always around. Fortune <laughs> he's, always around. Always, he's always here somewhere. <laughs> Where's the mini mic? I'm just kidding. I, okay. <laughs> I just, I'd, I'll take Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes. And I'll take Josh Allen versus Aaron Rodgers. But I will not take Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes because I can't stand the State Farm commercials, the Jake from State Farm, the Patrick Price, the Aaron Rodgers rate. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You know that they're they're probably filming those commercials like this week and next week. So and then we got to deal with the Baker Mayfield, and he's not even in the Super Bowl. We got to build deal with the, <laughs> the progressive. Com- it's like, man, how much? Uh, like, no, no, I'm not having <laughs> We're it. Done. We're done. I'm We're not having. And then we're gonna have State Farm. Friday Night War is brought to you by State Farm. I should put that on there. No. (laughs) All right. Good show this week. No. Any last statements before I close things out? Yes. I'm the greatest debater of all time. I'm float like a butterfly. I sing like a... No, wait. I can't use that one. Somebody already did, right? Dang it. Just let you know, Mike, I am the greatest. I am the best. I debate anybody anytime. No, I'm just kidding. That's just <laughs> wimps say that. Wimps go there. We just like to have fun on this show. I hope you guys have fun this week. It is what it is. Remember, it's easier to type Joe than it is to type Mike. <laughs> Three <laughs> letters instead of four. Get right. in there, get vote. Send us to your family and friends. Friday Night Wars.com also, so you can get your team oh, yeah. Joe equipment. Yeah, we got merch on FridayNightWars.com. What was that website again? FridayNightWars.com. FridayNightWars.com. Yeah, Joe, you should quit your day job and go on American Idol or something, man. 
Also, I think you're the better debater, Joe, because you keep it real, as you said multiple times. <laughs> you gotta keep real. <laughs> All right, everyone. Just remember, right there. See that? just remember that when you are talking sports or in a sports debate, you never know when you're going to have to go to war. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got, I'm going to say one more thing. I will say this about Staley to any Chargers fans that are watching and, and probably saw me get a little upset at the hire. Um, and I, I compared this hire to Mike McCoy. I compared this hire to Anthony Lynn. Doing my research, Staley is a much better hire than both. Um, he's not a running backs coach. He's not, you know, Mike McCoy was an offensive coordinator, but he was an offensive coordinator of Peyton Manning. You know, it's kind of like a similar situation to Adam Gase. It's not the same level um, of problems that I saw in those hires in this one. I think Staley can, has way more potential than either of those hires. So uh, I'm, I'm going back on that statement. Did you not see me do my dance? And I said, let's move on to the next topic. Right, let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> no, now you got to do the dance. Oh, let's move dance. on to the next topic. Yeah. This is like the Trump dance, right? Because once I do, I guess. <laughs> exactly. You just opened it up a little. You widen your stance. <laughs> I'm just in the... In the the chair that can wiggle so it makes it easy. <laughs> but yeah, once I say the dance and stuff, you can't just be going, no, let me go back. I had one more thing to say. I had to apologize to my people, to the to the Bolt fam. You just lost that that argument right there. Probably, yeah. but I got the first one and I'm gonna get the last one. <laughs>